What's up, Maridistas, and happy Friday. This is Kian Sobani. I hope you're having a great week and you're heading into the weekend with great vibes and some fun things to do, and you're going to enjoy the last Palmas game tomorrow. I wanted to uh, introduce today's clip. It's taken from the mailbag, which goes up every week exclusively over on patreon.com slash managing Madrid. Lucas Navarrete and I, we receive questions from our members and we answer them. Uh, and today's clip is about a couple hypotheticals, just some fun, nothing too serious. The first question is, in an alternate universe where Jude Bellingham plays in the three-peat, what happens? And the second question is, would Jose Mourinho have had an epic press conference against Barcelona by now if he was coaching Real Madrid this season? Lucas and I discuss it. Again, a little bit silly, but you know, not everything has to be serious all the time. The full episode we discuss whether or not it's wise to just stick with the current team instead of going after Mbappe and Holland. Um, what's more important, system or players? Uh, we also get into a couple more hypotheticals. An interesting question from our member, uh, why is Lucas so negative? And what actually makes him happy about Real Madrid? And his answer is there. I thought it was interesting to hear him kind of address that. Uh we also talked about too many center backs, and we also did a two-hour live call on Wednesday. So if you ever wanted to speak with us directly uh, and ask us questions and have conversations with us about anything you want, the best place to do that is our weekly live call that is every single Wednesday. You get a Zoom link if you're a member and join us on the call, and we have a great time. It's basically a giant Real Madrid living room where... Everyone is just hanging out, talking, and we're all maridista. It's a ton of fun. I highly, highly recommend you guys join the party over on patreon.com slash managing Madrid. If you're listening to this or watching this on YouTube and you don't have Patreon in your country, you can just simply hit join on the YouTube memberships tab. All right. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the clip, and let's get it. And we're going to start with a question from Nathan Hermes on Patreon. Interesting question here. Nathan says, Hi, Keon and Lucas. Do you think putting this transcendent form of Jude Bellingham in Real Madrid's three-peat era would have increased the team's success? As a coach, if you were coach, I guess, who would you replace him for? That was going to be my answer, actually. I was going to answer with another question, like, who are we taking out? Are we taking out Bale? I'm not entirely sure... To be honest, I don't think so. I don't think, first of all, I don't think, I don't see how you can actually increase the team success during that three pit. Yeah, obviously double, maybe even triple. But, uh, you know, that team actually achieved something that hasn't been achieved in the history of football other than, you know, a past version of, of the same club. So I don't, I don't know how you increase that team success. I, again, obviously, the, the the obvious answer is uh, by winning the double and all that. But you know, it's not always easy to kind of accumulate talent, and while you keep everyone happy and satisfied with the role. So yeah, in terms of depth, depth purposes, it would have been nice to have this version of Jude Bellingham so that you know Bale, Cristiano, or Benzema, could, or even Cross and Modric could rest more often. But at the end of the day, that adds. An, intri- an intriguing, you know, dynamic to a team which were which was working seamlessly and, and you know, had a, a, a very unbelievable chemistry to achieve the things they achieved. So my answer, as, as crazy as this sounds to some maybe FIFA players or football manager players who believe that, you know, talent, accumulating talent might be the only uh, way to win. In this sport, my answer is actually no. That maybe you know the team would not enjoy the success they they did by winning a historic Champions League three P. Interesting. Um, I have, I think I have a hot take on this, and but I want to ask you some questions first. Mm-hmm. I. So first of all, Bale is, in my opinion, the best right winger in Real Madrid history. And you can talk about how much you don't like him for whatever reason and blah, blah, blah. Dispute his legendary status because of what you thought of his... We've been through it. 
Yeah, I think from a talent perspective and what he achieved at the club, he was he's the best right winger in club history. Like he surpassed mm-hmm. to me, he surpassed Michel, he surpassed Figo. Not a particularly the... strong position in club's history, but yeah, sure. No, I mean you could have a more broad discussion in that if you ha- if you made a Real Madrid all time eleven, you probably wouldn't play a symmetrical four three three with a right winger anyway. But that's a different conversation. Um, so I'm I'm not benching Bale. There are two potential players you could bench. Um, I guess the, the you're not going to say Benzema, right? I'm <laughs> ready to to hang up here and. <laughs> okay, so before I get to the Benzema point, I guess the most realistic thing is you just need to click one more click. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to talk about Benzema yet. Uh, no, we're not talking about Benzema, period. <laughs> Let me finish. Uh, there was the 16-17 season. Bale wasn't in the lineup that much. I mean, he was. That was sorry, for, that was the season with the whole second unit, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was, you know, perfect team in terms of depth and all that. But obviously you don't, you couldn't afford to keep them all happy and satisfied with their role. So, yeah, they had to go a different way. But, yeah. <clears throat> when all is said and done, let me ask you for a, a very hard prediction to make because we never know what's going to happen. But let's say when Jude Bellingham retires, who is the greater player, Isco or Bellingham? It has to be Bellingham, yeah. Isco was amazing for us, especially in that 16-17 season in the Diamond. What would happen if you replace Isco with Jude? Would you say Isco was an undisputed starter that season? I wouldn't. No, well, he was because Bale was never... He actually only never... started one Champions League final of those three, right? Um, he started 17-18. He started two, I no, think. No, he started yeah, two. He started he, two back-to-back back because two. Bale was injured. Bale was injured in the, in yeah. the middle one, yeah. So, I mean, he was by default a guaranteed starter because Bale was basically never healthy. Okay, for the sake of argument, okay. But we know if Bale was healthy, Isco wasn't starting though. Until that that last Champions League final with the bicycle kick and all that, where Bale was already on his way down in terms of chemistry with Zidane. And, it, you know, yeah. By by seventeen eighteen, when Bale came off the bench against Liverpool and did that, him his relationship with Zidane was pretty bad. Exactly. <clears throat> um, that okay, was but- the only season where you can actually say Bale wasn't an undisputed starter when healthy. Yeah. So, I think it would be really, really hard to improve the success of the 16-17 season because of what we achieved and the dominance with which we achieved it. So, like, if we're unless we're saying we Bellingham would have helped us win the treble that year because we were, you know, we got knocked out in the Copa del Rey, then you're not improving the team unless you're coming in and saying, well, we would have won the Champions League easier. But the reality is we pretty much dominated UA in the final. That was a dominant. It's hard to improve that team. I think where the, where you could improve it is 17-18 because 17-18, yeah. we were terrible in the league. Then we were like 17 points behind Barca. 18, 19, yeah. yeah. And by that time, Isco and the Diamond had been scouted by opponents. They knew that defensively it was a mess. I think Bellingham, if you sub out Isco and put Bellingham in the 17-18 team as the team's number 10, I think that team is better. I thought we were doing for the whole three-peat era, though. I know, but how do you, it's hard to break up. Like it, It's hard to lump it into one thing because... If, you do, if, if we're just doing one particular season, I agree with you. 17-18, I could see Bellingham starting and, not, and, and, and actually increasing the team's chances of success. I thought we were doing the whole, like, put Bellingham in the whole three-peat era. What right. happens then, right? If that if that's the case, my answer would be no, because again, the disease of more thing that Pat Riley has been talking about with the in, in, with the Miami Heat when when he was winning and the Lakers and all that, saying that I, repeating the success is actually harder than getting success the first time because everyone every each and every single player maybe wants more and you have to fight against that, right? So, and that's what actually happened after the first Champions League title of the of the three peat that you know the team found out that some players 
and that keeping that second unit together wasn't as easy. So again, if we're talking for the whole three peat era, my answer is no. If we're talking like pick a team of those three years, could Bellingham start and increase the chances of of success? I agree with you that seventeen eighteen makes sense for him. Yeah. All right. So here's the other player. I think you could talk about starting over in Real Madrid's team that year. That three peat. So hear me out. In the 2017-2018 season, Benzema on the league from an XG of 12.8 scored five goals. I think that's the one where if it's it's either Isco or Benzema, I think you could start him over. You have Real- to move Cristiano Ronaldo to the center though. No, I don't think so. You, you think, play Bellingham as a false nine? Yeah, I would. I think you could do it. He can do all the link-up stuff. You're he can also play affecting, defense. You're affecting Cristiano also Ronaldo's score. input, though. You're affecting Cristiano Ronaldo's input, though. Are you, you though? Know. Because I think he could yeah, link up are. with Cristiano no. just the way Benzema could. No, not, Why not just the way. Not just the way. He could link up with Cristiano Ronaldo just fine. Benzema is the greatest team that Cristiano Ronaldo has ever had. Cristiano Ronaldo, let's be honest, Cristiano Ronaldo's greatness... Is huge and will probably never live to witness a um, greater player than Cristiano Ronaldo play for Real Madrid. He owes a decent, sizable percentage of his success to Benzema's willingness to help him contribute and, you know, overall help his numbers and all that. And his chemistry with Benzema. Okay, it so was I- off the charts, man. It's, it's something you cannot, like, replicate in, in a laboratory or some, anything like that. Bellingham is obviously great in that regard, and I could see him linking up very well, but not as well as Benzema did, I don't think. I won't dispute the fact that Benzema was probably Cristiano's best ever teammate, but that's also because they played together for a long time. And mm-hmm. I think in any era, Cristiano would have found someone to link up with. I mean, Ozil fed him a million goals too when Ozil was there for those three years. And then... Uh, you know, even Bale, his fair share of... Now, it's true that the the link-up of Cristiano and Benzema was extremely unique. But I'm saying... I I think that if you put Bellingham in the Benzema role in 2017-2018 season, I think you're getting more collective offensive output, I think. Because Bellingham is taking the chances that Cristiano feeds him, which Benzema wasn't. And I think the link-up stuff in terms of setting up Cristiano, I think Be- Bellingham could do all that too. Yeah, but let's be honest. I mean, that season was so poor that you could put Bellingham pretty much everywhere you can. You you ended up winning the Champions League. Right, but yeah, you well, were it's, trailing. It's either Benzema by or Isco for that year. No, maybe Modric or Kroos too. Why not? I mean, well, the they were amazing. so poor. No, they were good. They, they couldn't good. have been amazing if, they, if you were trailing Barca by 19 but points I, I, in January, I, I, man. I think the 17-18 season was less to do with individual failure, although like there was some individual failure. But there was, systemically, I thought it was a mess. In La Liga, it was the same game we were watching every game. The, the opposing team would play one pass from their back line and just split us in half. And then they would have a breakaway on the second pass. Bellingham we could, could help there too. Yeah, defensively, With his work he was, rate he, in the midfield. I mean, definitely would. Yeah, uh, of course. But I, I, my point is that Modric, like for example, was not a problem that year. He was doing everything he physically could to 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 patch it together. Casemiro was playing as like a striker for like half. He wasn't even playing defensive <laughs> midfielder. Like yeah, yeah, the yeah. structure was a mess in seventeen eighteen. Yeah, if we're talking that particular year, maybe the answer is probably yes for both Isco and Zeman, maybe even for me, for either Modric or Kroos, even. Like, whatever you can play Bellingham <coughs> on the field, he would have made sense because that team was not that great, other than even though they ended up winning the Champions League. But again, I understood the question as put him in this whole three-peat era, what happens? And I don't think that, team's repli- that team is replicating the, the three-peat. If you put Bellingham in there just because of chemistry purposes, man. And and I'm not saying Bellingham is a bad teammate or anything like that. I'm just saying that, you know, everyone was at the peak of the powers there. Even Isco, Ronaldo, Bale, Benzema, Modric, Cross. And I'm talking about the whole era, the whole three years. Again, if we, if you put Bellingham in for, for Benzema for the whole era, you're definitely affecting Cristiano Ronaldo. 
also his maybe even his happiness within the club and all that because you know Bellingham is taking away some of the spotlight he earns and deserves so my answer just for just because of chemistry I'm not a fan of these whole theories of accumulating talent and all that man are are there like NBA analogy do we have better power forwards in the NBA than than Aaron Gordon yes for sure for sure I mean would put if you put AD alongside Nikola Jokic, would the Nuggets be as good? We don't know. We don't know. His chemi- Gordon's chemistry with Jokic is so great and so unique, and Gordon is willing to do the dirty work, defend the, the, the team's opposing player that, you know, it's a perfect fit alongside Jokic. So we don't need another star whose chemistry with Jokic might, might not be as good, who might not be willing to, you know, get his hands dirty as much as Gordon does who actually defended the team's star in the whole playoff run so again I think chemistry matters <laughs> long story short I, chemistry matters but it's not like you're adding it's not like the kind of problem of putting KD Kyrie and James Harden on one team it's different it's Jude Bellingham who was a character guy mm-hmm. that's where I think it makes this discussion different Real Madrid had other players in that team that might not, again, Cristiano Ronaldo is one of them, Sergio Ramos is another one of them, who would, might, might not be willing to accept that kind of a spotlight Bellingham is having right now in that era, you know? I think, okay, so you know me, I'm, I'm, I have an opposite, I don't, I, I, so I can actually, no, I don't have the opposite. I have a. Com- I completely agree with you when it when it comes to chemistry and unity and all that stuff. It really matters when you're building a team. You can't put. You can't. And just you throw got lightning in a bottle, man. Like let, let's face it, you got lightning in a bottle on that three pit era. Like it's not easy to improve that. <laughs> it's definitely not easy to improve the the trophies you won during those three years. Yeah, well, I'm not, I, I, it's actually impossible if to improve it exactly, in the Champions League. Exactly. Again, so, the only way you're improving the three pit is if you're starting to win more domestic titles. During the three-peat. And does Bellingham... Does that cause you the success in the Champions League, though? Well... Maybe it does. I don't know. Yeah, look, you can't, you can't replicate that. You can't... Like, there's, I've, I've, I've been on record about this, too. Like, you can't... There's nothing you could have done to improve the three-peat. All I'm saying... Because you, you hit perfection on all rounds. Like, uh, maybe the process Navas with at Frank times... Casillas. You replace Navas with replace Navas with Frank Casillas or whoever. I don't know who, who, who was the weakest point in that team. Yeah, maybe it was Navas. Maybe it was Carvajal wasn't that great during that era as well. Yeah, he was. Like, that's the thing. Like You can. like Everyone was at their peak. Yeah, exactly. You... Everyone was at their peak. But Navas, prime, uh, prime Jesus Navas wasn't prime Casillas or prime Manuel Neuer. You replace Navas with prime Casillas or prime Manuel Neuer and maybe that it affects the team chemistry, you know, because Navas got along really well with Modric and, and Ramos and this has something to do maybe with the team success later on. Yeah, uh, look, you're all, you're right. But my my while I'm saying that unity is really important, I think there's another thing is that the better the players are that you have, the more you increase your chances. Of winning. Sure. So my answer to the Gordon Anthony Davis thing would be if you put Anthony Davis next to Jokic and get they had chemistry, I think they would have be even more unstoppable. I think it's hard to be even more unstoppable than when they mm-hmm. were last year. I don't year, know, man. man. The, the West is strong this year. I don't think the this year the Nuggets are should... going to walk through to the final yeah. as easily as they did last year. I know, but I was talking about last year though. I was talking about right. things have changed. We lost Bruce Brown. It's always hard to replicate success. Brown was a huge integral part in that team. So in that particular team last year, I'm not sure that if you take Gordon out and put Davis in, who defends Kevin Durant now? I'm serious now. Who who defends Kevin Durant and LeBron, and LeBron James now? Yeah. You know, it's not always easy to to replace these uh, players who might be seen as the weak uh, spot in in that team when they are doing the dirty work again. Benzema so, was doing the dirty work for that team. I know his numbers weren't great, but he was doing the dirty work. In, I agree in terms of allowing. He was Cristiano doing a lot and, of great. Um, Bale. I agree. Exactly. My point is that Bellingham does that too, and he would probably score more goals that year. Than, than Benzema did, that's all. In that particular year, I agree, yeah. Yeah, if so let's say like... the whole three-peat, yeah. 
uh, if you're d- talking about the whole three peat, I think this is the way you would have to do it. You have to talk about some kind of like progression, maybe. This is unrealistic, but like let's say 15, 16, he doesn't start. He helps you off the bench. Maybe he takes the Kovacic role. Um, the Kovacic role with, with the level of performance he's doing today? He would be 100% right to create some kind of controversy about that, man. Well, the first year, let's say that's his first year at Real Madrid. He doesn't have the, he hasn't gotten. Oh, no, no. Then, then we're changing the question, though, because we're talking about this year's version of Bellingham, like this outwardly version of Bellingham we're seeing right now. Well, if he comes in and if he's performing at that level off the bench, he probably just plays more and more, I guess. But And who comes to the bench, though? And has to accept being on the bench on their prime. I'd have to look at the squad, but Lucas Vasquez? <laughs> no, uh, he wasn't a starter, though. He was starting a lot in 16 17. I mean, I'm, again, I don't think Bellingham starts in, the fir- in his first year at Real Madrid because we have too many good players. I'm saying that there's probably like a progression where he gradually works his way into the team, and by 17 18, he's starting over Isco or Benzema. Yeah, but but again, to me that then we're changing the whole like yeah, Bellingham. In, then we, you're not putting this year's version of Bellingham into that team. You're putting an, a different version where Bellingham is actually having to work his way up the the team and kind of get used to the team. This is not the Bellingham we've seen. We've seen a Bellingham capable of being a top three player in the world. He okay. would not be. He would not be willing to accept a Kovacic role being but a ju- top three midfielder in the world. Man, but just as a reminder. Um, when Bellingham was at Dortmund, we didn't know he was this good as he is now. Right. So, like, let's say, like, if that fifteen, sixteen, we th- that Real Madrid team also didn't know how good he was. So they're not coming in with this expectation that this guy is going to lead the league in goals. You know, after Cristiano, maybe, and he's this good, and he he can play as an advanced player. Uh, so he just takes on uh, a lesser role, works his way into the team. So my pr- my progression would be, first year, he takes minutes of Kovacic and Vasquez. And sometimes when Bale is injured, sometimes when Benzema is injured, East Coast injured. So injured. And then the following year, he is basically kind of rotating with East Coast because Bale is barely in the team. And, and again, Vasquez, who played a lot of minutes during the 3P, let's not forget. We have to factor that in. It's a lot of Vasquez minutes probably. And then by 17, 18, he's just in the starting lineup over Isco or Benzema. That sounds about right, and it's a perfect case scenario, though. Again, that's not putting... If Bellingham is a 94 overall rating player now, uh, if and we're talking about adding this player we have now to that team, we cannot mm, try to imagine a scenario where Bellingham is not this version we're seeing today, right? Like, yeah, I, I accept that for sure. This, this, we're in part the reason we're seeing this version of Bellingham this year is because we desperately need it. Yeah. Yeah. In that era, we wouldn't have been as desperate. Uh, all right. Let's move on. KJ85 on Discord says, Hey, Keon and Lucas, how much do you think Real Madrid should respond to Laporta slash Xavi and their meltdowns? I mean, I like our approach that we let Real Madrid TV do the trash talking and our board coaches and players keep their cool, but enough is enough. For this one time, I wish Mourinho would come back to do a press conference and verbally abuse the whole Kool-Aid spectrum. Any thoughts on this? I'd like to. I'd like to take some of the spotlight away from Real Madrid TV. I think some of the stuff Real Madrid TV are doing, I'm not a fan of, to be honest. The whole uh, referee signaling uh, before each game, like alluding to each and every single mistake this referee has made here and there, maybe against some other opponents also. I'm not a fan of that, if I'm being honest. I'd like to be a little bit more upfront, if you will. And I, if you have something to say, don't let uh, Real Madrid TV do it. And and maybe the players or the coaches uh, should do it first. And what Laporta and Xavi have said in days past is serious enough for me to uh, believe that it grants a response from either the players or the or, or the coach. So I would like to. I would like to see Ancelotti or or the captains to to speak up and kind of confront this narrative that this crazy narrative that Xavi and both Laporta are putting out there. 
um, I'm conflicted on this a little bit because in on some level, I think it's good to have Ancelotti at a time like this because if anything, he'll diffuse it a little bit. If it's Mourinho, it's just going to be a back and forth, just cannonball, a war of awards every single press conference. I I have a theory that, and look, Xavi has a lot of ridiculous quotes that if he was my manager, I'd be really frustrated with. Yesterday, again, he praised how proud he was of his team <laughs> to, to lose an incredible athletic atmosphere. I think part of the reason why Xavi is as behaved as he is these last couple of years is because of Ancelotti. Um, and I think that goes for every opposing manager. There's not a single manager who, who doesn't respect the hell out of Carlo. I think it sometimes you want people like that to diffuse it. And, and if it was Mourinho, it would just be, you know, those, um, what is that called? Those, there's that big metal ball in the chain. The chain is hung to the ceiling and you can swing yeah, it. Wreck, a wrecking ball. A right. wrecking yeah. ball. Oh my God, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> if Mourinho was here, it would be a wrecking ball thrown and it would come back harder each time. You know what I mean? <laughs> it would just be destruction every every single press conference. And I'm not saying that's good or bad, but I'm just saying that's a, there's just a lot of unnecessary drama. I have to attribute a lot of our success in the last eight to ten years to the demeanor of Zidane and Ancelotti making the environment as calm as possible. So I I don't I I would be extremely entertained, don't get me wrong, if Mourinho was here, because I would love to see what what fighter he would come up in a press conference with, but I'm not necessarily sure that's for the best if we had that. It's definitely debatable. And uh but it would be fireworks. I mean look, we we all know that 99.99% of the stuff that Laporta and Xavi are saying are absolute just ridiculous D- delusion and or deflection of their own problems. And once you put I, – I, I mentioned this to Diego. I'm not a fan of Real Madrid TV's videos that they put out. I don't like them. But at the very least, it's like this compilation of things you can just – because I wouldn't – I don't have the time and energy to go back and – go through every single call, call that went uh, against us. But at the very least, like they kind of make that easier for us in a debate. We can just kind of send the video like, oh, yeah, what about <laughs> this? So in some way, I'm, I'm kind of thankful for it. But uh, my, I guess I think as I'm talking through it, my take would be I don't know if it's necessarily a good idea to have Mourinho here in, in a situation like this. It probably wouldn't help with the winning but uh, at least you would feel that something, someone in the club big enough and not a, a regular worker in Real Madrid TV is willing to kind of defend uh, your feelings as a Real Madrid fan, right? And defend the truth even. Not even your feelings as a Real Madrid fan, just defend the truth. What's the truth? Because right now only Barcelona or only Xavi and Laporta are speaking. And let's face it, even though Real Madrid TV videos have been getting more and more clicks and eyeballs, mm-hmm. it's not the same as having Laporta and Xavi speaking in front of the media, right? So maybe it wouldn't help with the winning, but at least the common and regular folks supporting Real Madrid would probably feel like someone has their back, right? When when other culés at their job <laughs> is kind of replicating this narrative from Xavi and, and Laporta. So. Yeah, maybe. Look, I I still think that you just focus on football. You respond on the yeah, pitch yeah. by just keep winning. Um, everything else could, could just be a distraction at this point. Yeah. Could you hire Mourinho for a day? Just outsource. Spokesperson. Yeah, outsource one press conference to him. Just he's, He doesn't have a job <laughs> right now. Just hire him for a day. Give him a whatever conference. he wants. <laughs> uh, unlimited access to um, to Battle Bebas and Real Madrid City, free coffee, everything. And hey, Mourinho, just here's the information, here's the evidence. Cook. Let's see what you come <laughs> up with. 